Origins is the map. Many people's favorite, and if not that, then it's most people's top five. There's an aura to Origins that is unlike anything we've ever seen. It is by far and away my most played zombies map, full stop. So I will sing the map's praises, but also give it some tough love. Buried is a massive sandbox, and Origins went just insane with that idea. Being Jason Blundell's second headlining map, it has a lot to live up to Mob of the Dead, and somehow Mob wasn't a fluke, because Origins was just as good, if not better. Origins is overflowing with things to do, and is so filled to the brim that the skill ceiling for Origins is nearly infinite. So in this video, we will go over everything Origins has to offer. Just like Mob of the Dead, Origins starts right off the bat with an awesome intro cutscene. Let's take a moment and break the ice with the reintroduction of our Black Ops 1 characters. If you go into these maps blind, seeing Tank Dempsey hop off of a tank gives some endgame level shivers. Followed by Nikolai and Takio kicking ass, and finally Edward Richtofen. These characters are what we would come to know as our Primus crew, a much more serious take on the Black Ops 1 Ultimus crew we knew from before. The Origins cutscene is backed by a returning Zombies guest as well, Avenge Sevenfold, and I'm glad they're back. Although this song is more from an already released album rather than a song created specifically for zombies, it still elevates the excitement that you have for this map. You get pumped up, ready to tackle whatever the World War I has in store. This is capstone by the fact that the transition from the cutscene to gameplay is one of the most iconic in gaming, period. The robot is still in that same step. It really surprises me how smooth it is, and this brings us to the starting room of Origins. Right off the bat, there is a ton of things to do. Origins spares no wasted space in its ambitious design. In the spawn room alone, you have a Maxis drone part, a lightning staff switch, the challenge board, two music triggers, the shovels, the generator on top of the zombies spawning in. To a new player, it can seem overwhelming, but the skill ceiling is there. Experienced players will hit the lightning staff switch right away instead of an hour from now. New players will get the generator going as quick as possible, while experienced players will farm the 100 extra points you can get from Templar Zombies. The skill ceiling is so high in Origins that it is possible to get a pack-a-punch gun without opening any doors. Sure, it's difficult, but the challenge is there, and this spawn room represents everything I love about Origins. The word skill is properly deserved here because Origins is hard but it's also fair, and you can outmatch the map with certain strategies and tools. With those strategies and tools, however, come my biggest criticisms of the map. Once you learn Origins, there's really only one way to play it. Once you become a master of the map and learn it inside and out, how to optimize your path, I challenge you to play Origins like any other Zombies map. Have you tried playing Origins with just two normal pack punch guns, no equipment. It's hard. Not only is it hard, but it feels like you are playing the map wrong. Like you went to school with one shoe on. There's always this feeling in the back of my head saying, you are playing this wrong, now go get the fire staff. But with Origins going out of your way to get these things is both worth it and crucial for your survival. And not only does Origins have amazing rewards, but they take pre-existing zombies assets and crank them up to 11. Like, take this stone in Gen 2 area, for example. You can pick it up, take it to the church, get melee kills, and come back to the same area and get some more melee kills. This gives you the G-Strike grenade, which what in the world is it? It's a monkey bomb, but it's also an airstrike. Holy crap. This is even prominent in your starting pistol with the Mauser. Pack-a-punching this doesn't give you the Mustang and Sally explosive pistol, but instead gives you a super accurate laser of death. I love this thing. It's one of those things they didn't have to do, but they did it anyway. In fact, I kind of wish they didn't do it because Origins is the one map with PhD flopper on it. Are you serious? But there's no flopper machine, so where do you get it? Well, that's where the Wonder Fizz comes in. The Wonder Fizz is basically the mystery box, but 
for perks. It's actually kind of a good idea. See, there's a ton of perks and zombies now, so it only makes sense that all the perks on the map are in the Wonder Fizz. So it's the only real way you can get Double Tap with an asterisk, Electric Cherry, Deadshot, or PhD in Origins. I really do like this system, as sometimes without it I could imagine a new maps just being littered with perk machines everywhere and it wouldn't feel special. And this also feels like a direct response to the lack of perks in Mob of the Dead. There are so few perks with the reason I can only presume being memory limitations that Jason Blondell said, fuck it, here is a machine with all the perks in it. Couple the Wonder Fizz with the golden perk bottles and you can get nine perks on Origins. Like I said, it cranks everything up to 11. Speaking of which, how do you get the golden perk bottles? Well, Origins introduced another awesome feature that wouldn't come back in future games. This, of course, is the dig site system. While it would come back in various forms like Shadow and Zetsubo's plant pods, this was the most simple. My only gripe with the system is that there's not four shovels right away in the spawn room. It can be very annoying if you want to use the dig site system in multiplayer matches, but you have to wait until he gets the church potentially. But other than that, I love the way this works. There's random little dig sites around the map and you can dig them up. This can be anything from zombies, to a gun, to a power up, and it's pretty good. But again, this is Origins and it gets cranked up to 11 with the Golden Shovel. The Golden Shovel allows you to get even better rewards and combining with zombie blood allows you to see invisible red dig sites, which can give you a free perk slot. It goes even higher with the fact that you can get a golden helmet, which allows you to be stepped on by the robots with no consequences. These decisions are again awesome because they didn't need to be added, but they did anyway. And once again, cranked up to 11. There's even a melee upgrade because of course there is, and it's not a powerful knife or anything. It's your own damn fists. Love it. But enough about the map's features, let's talk about the map's design. Origins map design is pretty interesting. You start off in this claustrophobic starting room alongside the tight trenches. You'll want to keep moving through this area as otherwise you will get trapped very easily. This map is marked with seven key areas. Six generators and the Pack-a-Punch. The generators define the map, and everything in between is just a method to get from one generator to another. The trenches are narrow slipstreams that spit you out to either Gen 2 or 3 depending on which way you went. Luckily, in the long run, it doesn't matter as both paths lead up to this bunker right before you go out into no man's land. Coming out of that bunker into no man's land is like coming up from the surface after swimming a bit too long. It's relieving, but you are also introduced to a new mechanic, the mud. The mud is everywhere in Origins, and it slows everything down to a grinding halt. In Black Ops 2, you can actually get around the mud pretty easily with the sprint hopping, but in Black Ops 3, you will trudge through this mud whether you like it or not. But if you know what you're doing, it's pretty easily avoidable, and stamina up can easily remedy it as well. But still, the fact that it takes up a huge chunk of the map, I think at least 50% of the play space, it's egregious. But other than that, this is where you finally have Gen 4 and Jug. It's in a pretty central location, but also the perk machine itself is in a pretty tight spot. So again, another great game design feature of the best perk being in the most difficult spot. This no man's land area is where you'll spend a bulk of your time. But if you want to keep going, you've got the church in the back. And behind that is Gen 6. The church is probably the most boring part of Origins and the most forgettable. It seems more like it should have been a background prop, like in town, rather than a place to go like in Buried. Apparently in early development, there was going to be an entire village behind the church you could go in, which, thank god, that didn't make it to the final cut of the game. Sure, there's stuff to do here, but you're not going to spend your general moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in here. You're going to head back to the mound, which is the main attraction. 
Activating all six generators turns on Pack Punch at the mound. Now the mound is where Origins as a map in general gets turned on its head. All of a sudden, this whole time you've been on the ground level of the map, which is covered in World War I nonsense, but now there's this entire mysterious underground area for you to explore. The mound is deep and it just keeps going down far beyond when you think it stops. This is great for first time play, but when you're running back and forth with the staffs, it gets really annoying to run up and down all the time. Where Origins map design gets cranked up to 11 though is with the crazy place. This is an entire secret area all on its own, disconnected from the rest of the map. It's full of color and mystery. The only way to get to the crazy place is with a teleporter that is formed by a gramophone. Now, the gramophone is probably one of the biggest flaws with the map. It can only be used in one teleporter spot at a time, which wouldn't be that big of an issue if the teleporters were permanent. Why this wasn't fixed in Chronicles, I have no idea, but the gramophone being temporary cripples the map traversal and shells out another issue that I have with the map, and that is no fast travel. You have to be so far gone on drugs to think that the tank is a method of fast travel, even in the trailers, it's described as a defendable platform. I think something, anything, is better than what Origins has right now. I've always thought of a zip line that goes from the bell tower of the church down to like Gen 3 or something, but the robots would interfere with that, so maybe not. Or utilize the robots in some way. The robots could have five launch tubes instead of its four it has right now. The very center one could launch you back to where you got in the foot and maybe the tubes could be color coded and the map in the robot could have colored dots on the map to indicate which tube went where. Kind of like the Apothecan in Revelations or something. I'm just spitballing here and I mean if we aren't going to commit to the portals being open we need something because every few rounds a wave of Templar zombies comes out and disables generators. This can be trivialized with G strikes but that's if you're nearby. The worst case scenario is if you're at the church and the generator one starts getting captured. You are not making it in time, and let's get that clear right now. This isn't even a challenge, it's just an annoyance. Even worse, if you use your staff to clear out the zombies, you don't get a max ammo, so what's even the point, man? I think we would have been better off if we were just left with the one other mid-round interruption. The Panzer Soldat is the most iconic mid-round boss in Zombies. We started out with Brutus, but he was a pushover sometimes. The Panzer, on the other hand, was terrifying. It is such a difficulty spike because it comes in at such an early round at round 8. Most other mid-round bosses don't even think about showing up until the double digit rounds, but the Panzer breaks that convention. Other than George, I think the Panzer is the best boss enemy in Zombies. In a world where we are just bombarded with meaningless, non-threatening enemies, going back to Origins is still a challenge, from the fact that the Panzer is just so well designed. It has two main attacks, the Flamethrower and the Grapple Arm. The Grapple Arm is probably what makes the Panzer so iconic. It literally grabs you, stops you in place from moving, and then slowly brings you towards the panzer just to maul you. But it's really easy to get out of if you just shoot the red dot on the arm socket, but the panic induced from being slowly being brought to your own death is hilarious. But the best part is that you would think being round 8 most players would be ill-equipped to deal with the panzer, but most weapons, such as the MP40, will quickly take care of it, not to mention, experienced players can just get the staffs and basically insta-kill it. I love the Panzer. I think it's to this day the best traditional mid-round boss. I think it's finally time we get onto the Easter Egg of Origins. The Origins Easter Egg set a precedent of what everything after this would have to try and follow. The first step is building and upgrading all of the elemental staffs. The staffs are unanimous with Origins. They are one and the same. The elemental staffs all have unique spins on wonder weapons, and the fact that there's four of them means no player is left out of having fun on Origins. 
So many other maps have one wonder weapon in the box, and once it's gone, no one else can have it. But the staffs remedy this so much that every time to this day you boot up a public match of Origins, the very first thing you will hear is something along the lines of, hey, what staff do you want? Or dibs on lightning, or even their clan tag will be one of the staffs. Fair is fair, the regular staffs are pretty easy to build. With the ice staff, you need to just dig up dig sites while it's snowing. With lightning, you just need to grab the parts when riding around with the tank. For wind, you just need to grab a part from each of the robots. Fire is the only anomaly which confuses me to this day. One part you get by activating Gen 6, another you get from shooting down a plane, and the last is from killing a panzer. This tells me that there was something else planned but it had to be cut for dev time. Maybe throwing grenades at certain spots around the map, or maybe doing something when there's uh, no weather at all. I think it would be quite interesting. But either way, you also need a crystal for each respective staff in the crazy place. Build it at the bottom of the mound, and boom, you're done! These staffs are all pretty good in their current states, but they, like everything else, can be cranked up to 11. The ultimate staffs are super powerful, but the method to getting them is tedious at best. At worst, it's just obnoxious. Some parts of upgrading the staffs are easy, but other parts are just mind-numbing. I can get the appeal of figuring it out for the first time, but to this day, I still have to look up the ice staff codes, I still have to look up which direction the lightning staff switches go, and I still have to look up the fire staff code. I do like there being a consistency with each staff requiring an overworld puzzle and a crazy place puzzle. They're all fun in their own right, but at the end of the day, I still have to double check every lightning staff switch to make sure I did it right, I still have to run around the mud shooting the smoking balls, and I still have to multitask the fire staff souls with the other staff souls. Cycling back to Origins being only played one way. Luckily, it is very much worth it to get these staffs. Each staff has a certain powerful attribute to it that kind of balances it out with the other staffs. Fire is the best general purpose staff, lightning is the best at killing panzers and also has the best uncharged shot. Ice is the best for camping, which leaves wind. The wind staff is supposed to be like the thunder gun, but very quickly it, its uncharged shot becomes super weak, leaving you to only use the full charge shot, which is fine like the ice staff, but the, unlike the ice staff, the wind staff has very, very little ammo. So it always confused me what the purpose of the wind staff was. So I'll always fall back on the ice staff, which once again, leads to playing Origins the same way, every time. Either way, these staffs are all visually stunning and fun to use. There's just something about everyone sitting in one spot and all using the uncharged shot at the same time that's just so, so satisfying. All the sounds and visual effects going off makes you feel like gods and legends, which ironically, your characters are legends carved in the stones at the very bottom of the mound where you got the staffs in the first place. Anyways, once you finally get the upgraded staffs, you next need to place them all in the robots. This step on BO2 isn't that bad because you can cheese it. But in Black Ops 3, this step isn't glitchable. It's patched. And it grinds the game to a screeching halt. All of this momentum of solving puzzles and getting the staffs is immediately destroyed because now you have to sit around and wait for the correct robot. In the Black Ops 2 version, you can just place and pick up the Fire Staff four times and it counts. In Black Ops 3, you have to wait. And wait. And wait. For the right robot. Sometimes you'll be lucky, but the more staff you place, the less likely the right one will come around next time. This is where Origins cracks. It's a great map, but this one step breaks the entire game. Players will wait, and wait, and wait, for the correct robot to come around. Due to the nature of the easter egg, every round is sacred, and going too high can result in failure, so players will want to not waste as many rounds as possible. And on such a conceptually easy step, players will wait, and their patience will be tested. And this is where the illusion breaks. The Origins robots are on a round-based pattern, meaning during certain rounds, a certain robot has the possibility of never coming around. 
there is not really a way to easily tell this, as in a game of zombies, you aren't meant to sit on one round for 20 minutes doing nothing. The thing is, most players don't know this. This isn't telegraphed in any way, and because the zombies community is a toxic cesspool, and only the top speedrunners know this, I'm not a speedrunner myself, but I am friends with some of them, and when I hear them run Origins, they bring up robot rotation every time. So if you're ever sitting on Origins and wondering why Freya would never come around, there you go. This is a top 5 worst easter egg step, and in my opinion, brings the entire Origins map score almost an entire point down. But luckily, we are still in Black Ops 2 territory, so what I say goes. And I say you can bypass the step with the fire staff, so I don't care. The next step is where I call the ability to solo Origins into question. Basically, you have to press a button in the robot head, and pretty much right after that, a G-Strike needs to be thrown at this spot out of the map. The timing on this, in solo, is so strict that I question whether this whole Easter egg was soloable on purpose, or just an oversight. In Black Ops 3, it's not as bad, but this is near impossible on Black Ops 2. First off, you have to hope that, again, you get the correct robot foot, but this time it's a bit better because all three come around every time. But still, you have to basically get ejected from the robot and press the button at the same time, hit the G-Strike perfectly, hitting that G-Spot, baby! But this timing is so tight, there's no way it was meant to be done on solo. And when you think about how much running around you have to do with the staffs and the fact that you can only hold one crystal at a time, how you're meant to be able to go into any of the robots and hit the button, Many things I seriously question, but moving on to the next part is if you do hit the G-Spot, you have to use another map mechanic I have yet to touch on. The Maxis Drone is such a cool addition. I think of it like the first iteration of the Specialist weapons in Black Ops 3. The Maxis Drone is basically just a Dragonfly Drone from Black Ops 2 on multiplayer, but it's like a little buddy. It can shoot zombies and pick up things around the map, mainly the discs for the free MGOAs, which is awesome. The fact that you can get a free pack-a-punch weapon just by running around the map is such a great idea. I do wish the Maxis drone was expanded upon. I can imagine a situation where players see the lightning staff piece in the mound and try to use the Maxis drone on it. Nevertheless, it's a great addition and I'm glad it's there. Even more tools at your disposal in Zombies. So anyways, you need the Maxis drone to go into the hole you just G-striked, and out comes a billion panzers. While the staffs trivialize this part, it's just fun seeing all those panzers come after your ass. It's even better if you have a first time player and you want to freak them out. So once that gauntlet is over, you need to interact with yet another new gameplay mechanic we haven't talked about yet. Zombie blood is the perfect solution to the problem that I think was trying to be solved in the very beginning of Black Ops 2. Some sort of zombie avoidance mechanic was trying to be implemented. It started very poorly with Tombstone, then Who's Who, then a bit better with the Afterlife, then a bit better with Vulturate, and it finally turned out that the most simple solution was the best. Zombie Blood makes zombies avoid you for a short time. It gives you an altered vision which can be used to see certain things like the Golden Dig spots as well as a special plane. You need to shoot down this plane and an invisible zombie will start running around the map. If you kill it, you get what I think is the upgraded Maxis drone. I'm not sure, it's not too clear, it doesn't really have that pack punch sound effect. But this is when the easter egg kicks in a high gear. Luckily again, Treyarch thought ahead in this easter egg and you can manually spawn a zombie blood every round by shooting the ice staff at some flaming carts near the mound. I'm glad this was put in the game, maybe in playtesting it was a bit too frustrating to wait for a random zombie blood, but either way, once you're done with that, now comes the fun part. All players need to go to the bottom of the mount, all the way down, and get melee kills with the super punch, the one inch punch. This is the main reason why Origins is such a tough easter egg, because this melee upgrade only lasts until round 18, and being flooded with zombies after this is lethal. But in Black Ops 2, this is a great step, as you can get the Elemental Knife. Whichever staff you have will give you its respective Elemental Punch. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the Chronicles version of Origins, which tells me once again, this is a glitch. 
But still, it's super fun. Finally, we have arrived to the finale of the Origins Easter Egg. I call this like a pre-alpha version of a boss fight. All players now must head to the crazy place, place their staffs, intentionally nerfing you as you face a bunch of zombies in the crazy place, which has constantly changing walls, so it's very easy to get trapped. This entire area is chaos, and you have to face a ton of zombies as well. Killing 100 zombies will clear the area, rewarding you with the best training spot in the game, and not being able to deal with the panzers as well. I think this aspect goes underappreciated, and most players will just be spamming the Maxis drone again. But if you want, you can leave the game in the first ever end game cutscene. Now I'm not too into the zombie storyline, but this ending really, really left a lot to be desired. It makes sense now that we have the full context, but this was really jarring and left the impression that the entire zombies game meant nothing. Following the previous finale of Moon where you blow up the frickin' Earth, this is quite underwhelming. I know nothing would have topped it, but I think it could have been close. But I think Mr. Raffle Waffles crying at the ending cutscene was good enough. Oh my god! 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 What the fuck? What the fuck? I'm crying right now! So, that's the Origins Easter Egg. I think this is probably one of the best eggs so far. As much flack as I gave it, it's only because this is one of my most played maps. So I'm going to notice the flaws much more. It has a great puzzle challenge, a great combat challenge, and a little fun along the way. That's everything I want in Easter Egg, and most of the previous ones have yet to meet those goals. I also love the nod to the Vorkuta mission in Black Ops 1. Reznov's steps are also the steps in Origins. It's a small thing, but it goes a long way, and can actually be the predecessor to the Easter Egg step wheel in Black Ops 4. There's just so much to do in Origins, and the Easter Egg highlights that you can just get all the tools in Origins, but if you get all of them, you can also fire through the Easter Egg. It really is the final boss for a Zombies fan. There are Zombies players that have soloed the Easter Egg, and Zombies players that have not. It is the separation between casual and hardcore zombies player. You will be a changed person if you finally summit that mountain. And if the solo egg comes with ease, you are a true master of zombies. No other easter egg requires so much knowledge on how the game works. And with the skill ceiling so high, it's no wonder that to this day, Origins is still gaining new world records. So what else is there to do in Origins? That's pretty much it, actually, but before we end this off, I do have to say that the soundtrack for Origins is the literal best. From the background music to the music easter eggs, this entire soundtrack doesn't miss. There's the somber tones that match up perfectly when it's snowing, there's the tank song that makes you feel like a true badass, and then there's the Gen 2 song that makes you feel like you're about to embark on the greatest journey of your life. And once again, Another hit from Kevin Sherwood with Archangel, probably one of my favorite music easter eggs, period. Along with Avenged Sevenfold coming back for another banger. Shepherd of Fire was so good, it's the reason I'm into rock and roll in the first place. Something appealed to my 13 year old brain so well that nearly 10 years later, I'm still headbanging into critical acclaim. And with that, my intentions have been known. Origins kicks so much ass that it overshadows its flaws tenfold. I love this map and I hope I did a good job of giving it some tough love. Origins was the third in the golden age of zombies, and this was nearing the pinnacle. Cherik was preparing for their magnum opus, and it stung because players would have to wait from September 2013 to November 2015 to receive their next masterpiece. But there was also an intermission, and that's what the next deep dive will be in. I haven't played ExoZombies in years, so I think it'll be interesting to see the fresh take on it. Did it age well? Probably not, but only time will tell. Overall, Origins is another map that I will never refuse to play. It's so good, and if you ever want to run the Easter Egg, I'm always down. I give Origins a 9.7 out of 10, double S tier. 
Thank <laughs> you.